you get asked probably a lot about what are, what are the things an entrepreneur in prop tech should be most focused on in starting their company? I'm sure you get asked this a lot. What's like the three key lessons that you would give or you would tell to any entrepreneur out there that has a prop tech idea, wants to start it, but is nervous? Yeah, I think it depends where it depends where they're coming from. I think if they have neither worked in real estate nor startup tech, I would usually tell them that they should get a job in one of those categories before starting one of these companies. Build the domain expertise. Build the domain expertise. However, I'll, I'll caveat that. I think the truly disruptive ideas that, that have a, a chance to absolutely change what we do and make a ton of impact and a ton of money, those might come from completely out of left field. And so I remain open to taking those pitches. I think the best entrepreneurs in the category I've seen, not necessarily embodied in one person, but the founding team has domain expertise in real estate, whatever category ideally they're going after, or experience in multifamily that could be applied to another asset type that's maybe moving slower. That's that that sometimes is really interesting too. I had a lot of success in this faster moving asset class, and now I'm looking to bring it into this slightly slower moving asset class, right? Whether it's going from multifamily to office, I think that's certainly possible. So definitely domain expertise, ideally startup expertise as well. I think having experience in the category and just having worked at an industry incumbent for a really long time can be helpful, it can also be dangerous. I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs who were very successful when they had really talented teams of 20 hungry people working under them and doing all the work. And then when they moved to a team of two or three, and they had to do all the work or 33% of the work, they just weren't, they hadn't been, had enough reps recently. And so they just didn't have what it took. So I look, I look for that. One of the biggest mistakes I see entrepreneurs making, and, and we do a lot of uh, B2B SaaS uh, businesses, vertical SaaS within our industry, entrepreneurs who come from a sales background typically think that all someone has to do is sales and no marketing and no product. We can just call someone on the phone, I'm so charming, I'll close the deal. Even if my product's not very good, doesn't work very well, doesn't create efficiency. And then a lot of entrepreneurs come from marketing and think they can just excel at branding and marketing and their product will go viral, like Instagram. But B2B SaaS and PropTech doesn't go viral. You still have to call someone on the phone. So what, I, what we've learned is, is, is viewing sales, marketing, and product like they're dials on a guitar amplifier. And they're not all gonna be at 10 for every company, especially when they're starting out. And you have to kind of A-B test it to figure out where you sit. But if you're all sales and no marketing, your deal's gonna get killed because it gets up to the C-suite and they say, oh, well, I've never heard of this. I haven't seen them at any conferences. I, I, I can't buy this product, even if the product's really good the junior people are demanding it because it creates efficiency and the salesperson has done his or her job convincing the buyer. Those deals get killed. The companies that are all marketing, those get killed too before they even start because everyone's sitting around waiting for this moment right. when the product's gonna go right. viral. And when it doesn't, they have no idea how to build and scale a sales organization. And right. so, those are really key things. I've seen that mistake made a lot. So we, we're looking quite a bit for that. Like what's your, what's your percentage? Are you 80% marketing, 20% sales? You 80% sales, 20% marketing? If you're 100% one, 0% the other, that's not gonna work for us. When it relates to the product, we like to drill it. Is there real efficiency being created? Are you delighting your customers? Or is this, right, we talk about, is it a need to have or a nice to have? Are you enhancing the margin profile of your customer? When an entrepreneur comes in to pitch us and we say, well, walk us through the, what's the analog archaic version, the pen, paper, fax, carbon paper version of what your customer is doing right now? 
When they can't answer that, when they're not in the in the headspace of their customer, that's a that's a red flag for us. You need to be able to articulate exactly what your customer does every day, all day, and how your product wedges in to create efficiency and margin enhancement for them. Does it enable them if they're a appraiser or surveyor? Can they do two appraisals a day instead of one? Or is it something else? I think one of the exercises we did still do in the accelerator, which always gets a laugh, but is tends to be enlightening for the entrepreneurs and us. So we have them write comic books about their customer. And it's like a day in the life of Zach. Zach is a loan officer at this bank. What does he do now during the day? And now write the comic book for what he could be doing if he was using your technology product. And if somebody can't do that, they don't understand their customer well enough and they don't understand their products well enough. So that's something we definitely look for a lot on the, on the, on the product side.